fam, welcome back, part six. Today we're gonna start on risk management and back testing. I'm probably gonna do two videos on my back testing model. Um, so where we left off last time is we had this cumulative updating um, pips to kind of investigate where we could exit a trade and how that would work. Um, today we're gonna delete this. <laughs> and we're gonna move on to other things. So first off, we don't need this. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here, just under price. Well, it doesn't really matter, just as long as we're before the loop. And what we're gonna initialize is two empty lists. One is gonna be P&L, so that's price, or I mean uh, profit and loss and we, that's going to be in pips and then we're also going to get the trade dates and this is going to be just for plotting purposes because so every time we place a trade we're going to get the, the time that we place that trade that way that when we look at the graph later everything kind of makes sense from a time perspective next thing we're going to do inside the loop is just after label is let's go ahead and get the start and end um, of the pattern so start is going to be the it's going to be the current index dot minimum and the end is going to be the current dot max okay and again this is if we find a pattern so if we did indeed find a pattern next thing we want to do is get the date of that pattern so the date is going to be is going to be data dot i location and end because that is when the we detected the pattern we detected it at the end of the pattern okay and so that's where we're going to be entering the trade hypothetically and so when we do this it's going to give us it's going to give us the value of the date I mean, i'm sorry it's just going to give us that row of data and that there's an attribute called dot name and that's going to be the actual date for that location for that index so now that we have the date we're going to go ahead and append it onto that trade dates so we have trade dates is equal to numpy.append trade dates and date so now that we have that appended the next thing we want to do is when when we're looping through this outer loop here i like to be able to see what's happening inside the loop because sometimes when we're doing back testing it takes forever so one thing we want to do here is open up our terminal and we're gonna get something called TQDM and TQDM is kind of like a, a console output uh, that gives us a percentage completion inside the loop and I'm not sure exactly how it works again I'm not an expert at Python or programming in general I just know how to use it so what you want to do is just go ahead and do pip3 install tqdm and you should get it. It says requirement already satisfied so we're good. So once you have that what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put it around this range here. So we're gonna do tqdm oh, I'm sorry I already have it imported here or oh, I don't actually. So what we're gonna do is import tqdm as tqdm like that and then down here we're going to do tqdm for i in tqdm and another parentheses and that's it so that'll output the how do you say that'll output the percentage as we're looping through alrighty so the next thing we want to do after that is now I want to talk about a function that we're going to have to build to do our trade timing. So what's going to happen is we enter a trade, right? And after we enter the trade, we want to put a stop loss. So that way, if the trade goes south, we get out, minimize our losses. But on the other hand, if we go up, like how do we know where to, when to get out? And the way that I'm going to do this is by using a trailing stop loss. So what we need to do is simulate a trading or a trailing stop loss for each trade that we do. So what that means is that 
for instance, if we go in long, right, we put our stop loss below where our entry point. If the price moves up after that, we want our stop loss to also move up with the price, okay? So there may be an easier way to do this, but this is the way that I'm going to do it. So hop over to the harmonic functions file, and let's go ahead and create this new function. We're going to call it walk forward. And it's going to take a couple inputs here, the price, okay, and then the sign, and this is going to be for either a long or a short trade, right, based on the pattern that we predict. And then something called slippage, and I'm going to put the slippage at 4 pips right now, I'll explain that in a second, and our stop loss, and let's put that at 10 pips, okay, just default. Alright, so really fast what I'm going to do is just breeze through and create this function, and I'll explain to you how it works and what I did, just so that we can save some time. Alright, so what I just did there was coded up this function and what the function does is it walks forward through the price series that we pass in and what it does first is we set our slippage so we enter the slippage here as an integer I'm converting it down into its actual pip decimal places by dividing by 10,000 and then doing this, the same thing with the stop amount so what I've done is I've set the stop amount separately from the stop uh, don't ask why I just did it and um, next thing is if we have the sign here, if it's one, so we did a long trade, then our initial stop loss is going to be below the initial price that we entered the trade at. Okay? And that's going to be the initial stop loss, and then we set the stop loss, and that's going to be like the current stop loss, and this thing is going to move. Okay, so the next thing we do is we walk forward through the series, and first we walk forward one place and we check did the price go up or down. So we calculate this move here. That's the current price minus the last price. If the move was positive and if it's if it's uh, if the current price minus the stop loss is greater than the initial stop loss. So basically, if we are still uh, if we if if we went up and the distance between the stop loss where we originally set it and where we are now is greater than the stop amount, then we want to move our stop loss up so that what we do is we move that stop, lo stop loss up by taking the current price and subtracting the stop amount which is where we want our stop loss to be the other case is if we got stopped out so if we did get stopped out price went down below the stop loss then we cut our losses we get out and that our return so we return the pips that we made which is going to be the stop loss minus the price that we got in minus the slippage now what the slippage is is that is attempting to account for like the spread and other things in the in the market that we can't really account for. So we want to set this as like a worst case scenario fixed loss every time we make a trade. So the next case is if we had a short trade and everything is going to be opposite here. So if you look, um, our stop loss is now above, so we do plus here. And the move is going to be the same, but now we're checking and we want the move to be less than zero and the price plus the stop to be less than the initial stop. Okay, and if I'm, I'm just breezing through this, but if you focus up and just look at it, you'll understand what I'm saying. Um, and again, when we move the stop loss, now we're going to move, be moving the stop loss down instead of up. So th I, mean, I know that it says plus here, so that may be confusing, but we're actually moving it down. And um, and then we're returning again the opposite. So it's the price we went in at minus where we're getting out, which is stop loss, minus the slippage. Okay, so this should all be good. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and get those pips that we made. So we got pips is equal to walk forward, and we're passing in price dot values, and then we're going from the pattern through the rest of what we have for price. Okay, so technically we could keep on gaining if the price just kept going up and we never got stopped out. That's a possibility. So we want to pass in as many points in the future as we can. So and then we're putting in harmonics J for the sign and slippage. We're gonna leave it at four and for the stop 
We can put it at 10, but I prefer to put it at 5, nice and uh, risk-free, kind of, if it, 5 pits stop loss is pretty tight, so we w really want the patterns to work out, and if they don't, then we cut our losses, you know. So, now that we have that, we have our pips, let's do price, or profit and loss, and let's append that, um, P&L, pips, and then let's get the cumulative is equal to PNL dot cum sum the cumulative sum so that's going to be the cumulative sum of what we have here and let's go ahead and dynamically update that just like we did with the bar chart and let's get let's comment this guy out real quick and reintroduce this one except instead of the bar sorry instead of the bar we're going to do um, plot and we're going to do cumulative pips here and label is equal to LBL and we're gonna label this with the accuracy the current accuracy of the program so actually before we do this plot let's let's get the accuracy here so if pips is greater than zero so basically if we made money on that pattern that we just found let's do correct paths uh, plus equals one uh, we haven't initialize this yet so let's go outside the loop up here next to trade dates and initialize that to zero okay and so now our accuracy label we can create that um, just out after this if statement and what we'll do is we will do label is equal to and we're going to make a string accuracy and we're going to add a string of let's see 100 times so it's going to be the percentage and we're going to do float of correct patterns divided by um, float paths. It's the total number of patterns that we found plus uh, another string percent. Okay, and so the only thing we haven't done is this again. So, so let's make some space right here. So if we find a pattern, so if it's any of them, again, so we're inside this if statement now. We're going to do paths plus equal one and let's do that same thing up here equal to zero okay so now we should have some form of accuracy measure and so we can label that um, like that like so and let's see plt.legend because we want that label to show up and we're going to do that pause again and so this is looking good so far and so now all we want to do is test it. So we need that plt.ion up top again for the dynamically updating plot. And provided that everything works out, let's check it. Okay, let me see. What do we do wrong here? Oh, okay. I see what is this import. I meant to do from tqdbm import. Okay. So that I should fix that. Throw values on there as well. Okay. And now everything should work out. Let's cross our fingers. Another error. So let's just try this. I just have a feeling this might work. So we put, just make it an array, an array of it, and that that'll probably solve that problem. All right. So here we are. We have this dynamically updating accuracy plot here. As you can see, we start off kind of rocky, but we quickly get to forty percent accuracy um, it's not looking so good right now but you'll see that it we get above 50 and so what that means is that even though not every single trade that we're making is going positive for us the trades that we are making are outweighing the bad ones so it's like if we have a fair coin and if we hit heads every time we get a hundred bucks and tails is minus 10 so it's like you know 50 50 but we're still making 90 bucks like on average you know so every time we flip the coin. So that's going to conclude this video. Uh, we can watch this go all the way. I think it ends at like somewhere like 67% at the end. But as you can see, the performance is is what we want. It's good, and that's even with the scenario that we're losing four pips per trade, no matter what. Uh, we can increase that even more to like five or ten pips to see, you know, really how that would impact how like really bad market conditions might impact 
like low liquidity and things like that. So again, thank you guys for watching the video and stay tuned for next time.